Blessings. Namaste. Beautiful. So, so, uh, last foray into pigeon pose, Kapotanasana. So, we're going to start in Sukhasana. Easy pose. So, you can use a cushion or a bolster or blocks as I am doing. So, you want to try and bring one foot across, Miss Lulu. <laughs> so the shin is parallel rather than bringing the foot in. So it's like a half pigeon. And then taking the other leg across. So rather than bringing the, the ankles in and doing that, you want to almost try and bring your heel so it's lined up with, as much as possible, the opposite hip. Pull your butt cheeks back. That's why you might be better off having a bolster so that we're already starting to rotate the thigh bone in the hip socket and already starting to get a stretch around your outer hips and glutes. Try and flex your feet as much as possible, sitting up nice and tall with a nice tall spine. Remember this is a pose and just like any other pose it takes practice, it's taken me a long time to be able to sit with any degree of ease in this pose so and that's the whole point of this little mini series going through pigeon pose and so this is kind of like a precursor to pigeon pose so once you're in your position and you can always wrap a belt around your thighs if you're still tensing or you can put blocks or cushions underneath your knees so you've got something to press against we're not going to be here for too long but if you need those kind of props then go right ahead and just take a moment to check in. So shoulders relax, close your eyes, check in, just noticing how you're feeling right now, noticing how you're feeling emotionally. So today I'm feeling a little bit hinky, what I call hinky, it's like I'm not quite in a bad mood, but I'm just, just a little bit off. You know, there's just something there that's just not quite, you know, quite right. And, Hip openers are great for releasing emotional tension as well. Even if we don't realize we're holding on to uh, emotions, we don't realize we've got stagnant energy, hip openers are great at releasing that. So don't ever be uh, surprised if you feel a little bit emotional at the end or even during the class. So just acknowledging however you're feeling without making yourself wrong, without beating yourself up over it, without criticism, it's just awareness so that you can check in again at the end of the class and noticing how you're feeling physically so if you're holding tension anywhere and quite often when we're experiencing a low vibration emotion and we're also got tension somewhere it's usually that the two are linked yeah the two are usually linked so for example i often get back problems when I'm feeling unsupported or I feel a bit overwhelmed. I feel like, I, you know, I, I haven't got the ability to support myself because our spine is our support system. Problems with the knees can sometimes indicate that we're being a bit inflexible, that maybe we need to surrender a little bit and not try and control the outcome of every situation. So again, our aches and pains are often linked to emotions that we may be going through. So we don't want to try and repress or deny them. We just want to be aware of them so we can work with rather than trying to, you know, deny. So, take another nice deep breath in uh, and let it go. And open your eyes. You're going to inhale, reach the arms up and exhale, take a little twist. So take the hand to the opposite knee. Imagine pressing your hand against the knee, but make sure you're not tensing that knee. Turning through your belly, chest, ribs, over your back shoulder. Pause for a second. Inhaling, reach up. Try not to tense the shoulders. Exhale, twist the other way. Again, hand to other knee. Press your hand against the knee, but again, try to make sure you're not pulling the knee or tensing. Turning through belly, chest, ribs, over the other shoulder. Inhaling, reaching up. Imagine lifting your spine, but carefully you're not tensing your shoulders. Exhale, twist. Inhale, center. And exhale, twist. Again, get a sense of your spine. Visualize your spine. Inhaling up. 
exhaling twist. So we're going to stay here. So I'm on my right side. It doesn't really matter where you are. Release that hand. Take a breath in. Look to the corner. As you breathe out, imagine folding over that knee. Inhale. Kind of rise up again as if you're in a wave-like motion. Exhale. Fold. Now you may not have a cat in your lap, so you may be able to find it a little bit easier. Inhale, lifting up, stretching, kind of waving from your tailbone to the crown of your head. Exhaling, relaxing down. In. Breathe from tailbone to crown and out as you relax down. Think of like a kind of water element. And this time just hanging out here, relaxing your head, relaxing your neck. Relax your shoulders, relax your hips. And feel that stretch around your hips, your outer glutes. Keep flexing your feet, relaxing your thighs. Imagine gently pressing your knees towards the floor, so you're still getting that hip stretch. In staying low, walking the hands around in front. Inhale, expand through the back of the heart. Exhale, melt the front of the heart down towards the floor. And curling yourself back up. Rebuild the spine, come all the way up. Switch legs, bring the other leg across in front. Go and try and have that shin so it's parallel. So there's a gap, there's a triangle as you look down as opposed to having their heels in. So it might feel a bit uncomfortable to start with, but then just imagine almost doing a double pigeon. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, twist. Again, turn through belly, chest, ribs. Turn your head, relax your thighs. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, twist. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, twisting this side, kind of facing over that leg. Inhale, as you exhale, melt forward. Inhale, waving up and exhaling, melting down. Try and think of staying grounded through your sit bones and stretching from your spine rather than collapsing from your ribs. Noticing how it feels on this side. So even if you're nowhere near that knee, you'll still feel a stretch. Then just hang out here, breathe, flex your feet. That will help protect your knees. So try and firmly flex your feet. Imagine your knees melting down towards the floor. And walking the hands around in front of you. Nice deep breath in, lift through the back of the heart, exhale, melt through the front of the heart. And curl yourself back up to sitting. Release your feet, remove your cushion if you've got one. And having the feet about a little bit wider than hip width to start with you're going to take your right leg and place it on your left thigh flexing that foot then bring the hands back and try and lift through the chest so kind of like a, a seated floor pigeon try and relax around this hip and outer glute imagine pressing that knee away but without twisting and tilting through the pelvis so just taking a breath or two here so don't be in a rush to go anywhere else keep trying to lift through the chest so we're kind of thinking of bringing that shin towards your chest but we're not in a rush to get there if that feels okay you can start kind of bringing your sliding your bum closer to that foot or sliding the foot closer to your bum again keep checking in make sure you're not tensing around this area so some days that feels okay and some days go today it feels a little bit tight so i'm going to just take it easy today i'm not going to push too far today so never come into it oh well, last time i did blah 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 doesn't matter doesn't matter what you did last time doesn't matter how it felt last time we're just here we only exist right in this moment so focus on how it feels in this moment 
And focus on the breath. Breathe, imagine breathing into any tight spots. And after your next exhale, slide back a bit, straighten that left leg out, bring this right knee, just kind of like stir it around a little bit, lubricating your hip joint around the other way, and bring that foot inside the thigh. Now if you've got really tight hips, really tight back, and you're slouching, you can again sit up on a block or bolster. If not, really press through this left leg down to the floor. Now what you're going to do is you're going to tr imagine that you're trying to bring the knee up and you're using your own arm to stop you. You're going to keep pressing, your other hand is down beside you. As you breathe in, imagine trying to lift the knee up, really use effort. As you breathe out, relax the thigh, but keep pressing so you press the knee down towards the floor. And each time, even if it doesn't touch the floor, you'll be getting more of a stretch. Inhale, try and bring that knee up. And exhale, release it from the opening, the space there. Again, inhale, lift, try and lift it up, really use some energy. And exhale, release. Let's take a breath in, lengthen up through the crown of the head. Exhale, lead with your heart. Once you've come forward, again, make sure you're not collapsing from your ribs. So you're coming forward with a nice flat back. Keep pressing that knee out and flexing this left foot and fold down over the leg. If you can easily reach your foot without tensing the shoulders, then you can clasp around the foot and imagine pulling your arms towards you as if you're trying to lengthen nose towards toes. So belly to thighs, chest to knee, nose towards toes, tuck the chin in, slide shoulder blades away from the ears, keep pressing that right knee down towards the floor, nice deep breath in, fill the body with breath, and out. And we do a little Brahmari breath here, humming, humming bee breath. We do two. So we inhale through the nose, feel the vibrations move through the body. Exhale. And again, breathe in. And out. the legs out, bats up and down a couple of times, and shake them out. Now bring the feet back to the floor again. So I'm going to bring the left foot onto the right side. Remember what I said about coming to each, each position, each time, each side, as if it's the first time you've ever done it. So just because it felt easy last time, or just because it was easy on one side, don't automatically assume it's going to be the same on the other side. So really feel into it, again, as if it's the first time you've ever done each pose. Keep flexing this left foot, maybe taking a breath or two here before you move anywhere else. Try to think of gently pressing that knee out, but without tensing around the hips. And only if you can do so without bringing more tension in, make it a little bit stronger. So if you've got quite open hips, quite shallow hips, hip socket, you'll probably find this pose kind of easy. It won't be much for you at all, and that's okay. And this is where the ego can sometimes trick us. It's like, oh, I'm not really getting anything. So for you, focus on letting go. Focus on just breathing. Focus on where you can expand a little bit more. So sometimes we, we focus on all the big stretches, 
that we can lose sight of the little releases and sometimes like, oh, I've done this loads of times before, oh, tra la la la, and not paying attention to, to where you're at. So notice how our ego can trip us up both ways, either by constantly saying, oh, I'm rubbish, I can't do this, or by, oh, this is really easy for me. <laughs> so the trick is just to observe those thoughts, watch them come, watch them go. And after the next exhale, again, slide that leg out, circle this bent knee a couple of times in each direction. Then again, bring that foot against the inner thigh, anchor through this right leg. So again, you're going to try and bring that knee up and you're going to use your own arm to stop it. So inhale, try and really lift the knee, really use some effort. So you're almost shaking, you're using that much effort. Then exhale, relax the thigh, but keep pressing with the arm. Make sure you're not tipping off the other sit bone as you do that. So inhale, try and lift up. Exhale, press it down. Again, feel yourself making more space each time once more. And keep pressing that knee down, breathe in as you bring that stretch from your tailbone, folding over that leg again, if, only if you can reach the foot without tensing and without collapsing your ribs into your uh, lungs, clasp the foot. If not, if you're slouching, if you're tensing, then just stay right where you're at, tuck the chin in. Keep pushing through this right heel. Let go of any expectations. There's no there to get to. Just fill the body with breath. Know that sometimes our biggest challenge is just to surrender. Do another Brahmari breath here. So a nice deep breath in through the nose. Mm -hmm. and inhale as you curl up. Bring that knee in. Give it a little bit of love and attention. And just stretch the legs out for a minute. Take the arms out and circle your wrists. And around the other way. Inhale, flex the hands up. Exhale, flex them down. Inhale, flex up. Exhale, flex down. And shake out the wrists. And come over onto your hands and knees. Hands a little bit wider than the shoulder width. You're going to set up for down face dog. So you're going to tuck your toes under. Just do a couple of little cat stretches here. So as you breathe in, drop your belly, lift your tailbone, and imagine hugging your upper arms into your ribs as you look slightly forward rather than up. And as you exhale, tuck the tailbone under, lift through the back of the body, press the hands into the floor, draw your chin in towards your collarbone, stretch the back of the body. Inhale, flex. And exhale, arching up. And inhale, flex. Keep that little flex, sit back to your heels. Try and bring your ears in alignment with your arms. Relax your shoulders, press into your hands. Your knees come off the floor. Keep pushing into your hands as you lift your legs into your down face dog. Maybe just pedal out the feet. Lifting one heel, then the other. And then 
press down into your feet, bring your feet a little bit closer, bend to your right knee so you can really press into the left foot, and both hands, stretch the right leg out behind you, start to lift it up, breathe in, as you breathe out you're going to take that right knee across to your left elbow, so shift the weight forward, come into like a plank, take it across towards your left elbow, Inhale, stretch off and back. Then exhale, bring it between the arms. If you're bringing it literally between your elbows, stretch through the back heel. Inhale, take it back. Exhale, take the knee to the opposite elbow. Or your same elbow, sorry. Inhale, take it back. This time, bring that knee to the back of the right hand and slide your other leg back, bring your right foot forward, coming into pigeon pose. Now you can still use a block, bolster or cushion under that hip if you feel you need it. So try and level out your hips, really stretch through that back heel. So imagine stretching from the back toes up to the crown of the head. And just gently rock a little bit side to side to relax your hips. You want to drop your hips down so there shouldn't be enough room to drive a bus through. And keep energizing that back leg. Then just walk the hands a little bit around to one side, a little bit of movement. around to the other side and do what feels good for you if there's any areas that you feel like you're holding tension see if you can release them a little bit and then come back and now lift and open through the crown of the head relax your jaw relax your shoulders keep squeezing your butt stretching through that back leg You're going to come back into our down face dog. So remove your block, bolster, tuck the back toe under, and stretch back. Make any adjustments you need to into your down face dog. So move a little bit. Now bring the feet closer again. Bend your left leg. Take the weight onto your right foot. Stand your left leg up. Breathe in as you breathe out. Come forward. Take the weight. Uh, take the knee to the opposite elbow. Hold for a second. That leg stays strong. Inhale back. Exhale. Bring the knee through between the upper arms. Hold for a second. Engaging your core. Inhale. Stretch back. Exhale. Knee to same elbow. Engage your core. Relax your shoulders. And stretch up and back. And this time, taking the knee. To the back of the left hand, slide that right leg back. You can use your block bolster cushion if you need to. So your hip almost wants to be touching that heel. Again, just gently rocking a little bit side to side so you can relax both sides. What tends to happen is we kind of tense, so we shorten one side. So we want to drop both sides, hip down and keep stretching through that back leg. Good. Just taking the hands around to one side, a little bit of movement. Again, there's no kind of rights or wrongs here. It's whatever feels right for you. And around to the other side. So again, we're stretching out the side waist. Come back to centre. Inhale, lengthen up through the crown of the head. Relax the shoulders. Draw your heart forward. Squeeze your glutes. Press the top of that back leg into the floor. And coming back into down face dog. So 
palms flat, tuck the back to under, and take that foot back, adjust if you need to. And from here, walk your hands towards your feet, turn your feet out, and come into Malasana Yogic Squat. If you need to, you can place blocks or cushions or something underneath your heels, or you might even have your heels slightly off the floor. If you need to bring the feet in a little bit, do so. But really focus on pressing those knees out, engaging your inner thighs. You can use your arms to help press the knees out, but also engage your inner thighs, tucking your tailbone under. So if having the heels flat means you're tensing the shoulders, then either have the heels slightly off the floor or put something underneath your heels. So just press the knees out here. Take a nice deep breath in and out. And once more in and out. There, release and bring the feet in again. Come down onto your hands and knees. Tuck the toes under, slide the arms out. Prepare to come back into pigeon pose. So lift yourself up into pigeon, uh, into pigeon, into down face dog. Into down face dog. And then we're going to come into pigeons and then we're going to take the right knee towards the back of the right hand and again slide that left leg back. Notice how it feels this second time. So you might be able to kind of relax into it a little bit easier this second time. If you still need to do a little bit of movement, that's okay, do so. If not, if you feel like you've relaxed your hips, then start to walk the hands forward to start with, but without just collapsing down onto the floor. So what tends to happen is we tend to just like drop to the floor. We don't want to do that today. Come down onto your elbows, lift your belly button in, and tuck the chin in slightly. Just stay here for a moment or two. Keep again making sure that your hips feel uh, level, your back feels nice and flat, and your left hip is resting on your left heel. Keep stretching through that back foot, back leg, and keep squeezing this back leg. Don't just like relax it. Engage the thighs and press that leg down into the floor. You can, if you wish, try bringing your left arm across in front of you, bending your back leg. Now go slowly because what we don't want to have happen is you lift up in the middle. So keep pressing your pelvis down, press your thigh into the floor, only when you're sure that your front of that, front of that thigh is still pressed into the floor, and then try and grab the foot. We're aiming eventually for the ankle, but for maybe foot to start with, and it is a strong stretch, it's always a strong stretch. Doesn't matter how often I do it, which is not probably not often enough, it's always a strong stretch. So focus on really trying to press your hip down, press the front of that thigh into the floor and lengthen and stretch the front of that thigh. Get nice deep breaths. So this is not one that you can force. And after a while you might notice that the front of the thigh relaxes a little bit and you can start to bring your heel closer to your butt. So again, it's one that you need to really take time with, otherwise you end up kind of lifting up and a big gap appears and you end up kind of like tensing. So again, you want to be relaxed, but still with energy. So just because you kind of relax doesn't mean collapsed. And after your next exhale, release that foot. Come back up onto your hands, inhale, lift through your heart, relax your shoulders. And again, walking the hands in, coming back into down face dog. So tuck your back to under, slide your right leg back. You probably need to pedal out a little bit after that stretch.
Then we're going to bring the left knee towards the left hand. Bring the foot across a little bit. Slide your other leg back. Yeah, really drop the hips down towards the floor. Again, notice how it feels this side, so your hip might come closer to the heel this time. And keep stretching through that back heel, relax the shoulders, imagine drawing your heart forward. So you're feeling a stretch, the front of the body, as well as the hip stretch. When you feel you can relax there, walking the hands out first, lengthening and then coming onto your elbows. You're not just collapsing down to the floor. Again, lift your belly button in towards your spine to protect your back and just relax your head so your head is in kind of a neutral position. So think of lengthening from your toes, your back toes, through to the crown of your head rather than just boom, collapsing down to the floor. And you can either just stay here, you can stay right here, or you can bring your right arm across. Again, just start by bending that back leg. Don't do heels first. You say what sometimes happens is as we bend the knee, we kind of like lift up in the middle because it's quite tight on the front of the thigh. So we tense the front of the thigh. So wait till that feels kind of relaxed and then try and find your back foot. So again, don't rush. And just hold on to the foot to start with. Breathe along the front edge of that thigh. So you can relax the thigh muscles. So you should still uh, be hips level. So we're not kind of like tipping off to one side. We haven't lost the uh, posture with the rest of the body. And you'll start to feel after a few breaths, the front of that thigh relaxing a little bit more. And after a few breaths, gently release that leg, bring the hand back. Come back up and inhale, lift and open, stretch up through the crown of the head. Imagine leading with your heart. Then come back into down face dog. Again, just walk your hands towards your feet. Tear your toes out, come back into Malasana with or without blocks, either feet flat or heels slightly lifted. Again, try and keep your spine nice and upright. Press those knees out. Take a nice deep breath in. And out. And then bring your hands behind you. Bring your legs out in front of you. Pull your butt cheeks back. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, fold. Grab hold of your feet or toes if you can. Pashimottanasana. Stretch the spine out the other way. So, so uh, although we tend to focus more on the hip opening aspects of pigeon pose, it is actually a back bend in that it stretches the front of the body. So it's always good to do a little counter pose and stretch the back of the body. If you've got really tight hamstrings, you can bend your knees and this should get a little bit looser now. Your next exhale, bring yourself up, stretch your legs out, and come down onto the floor. Palms up, arms away from the body, legs wider than hip width, shake the legs out and drop out. Arms out, palms up, 
eyes closed. If your head feels like it's tilting back at all, you can pop something underneath your head. If not, just close your eyes. Let your awareness scan through your body again. Just noticing how you feel right now compared to when we started. Remember what I said, sometimes, you know, with a hip opening, you can end up feeling a bit emotional, you might be a bit irritable or a bit tearful or a bit angry. Whatever, you know, just allow it to be. You know that it's, it needs to come out. With your eyes closed, we're going to finish off with three more Brahmari breaths. So just focusing on the vibration, you can play around with the pitch of the humming. You can, you know, go higher or lower, you know, see what works for you or, or alternate even. So with your eyes closed, body relaxed, three happy humming bees. Nice deep breath in through the nose. Hmm. in your own mind, I am so happy and grateful because I am so happy and grateful because and know that whatever comes to you after that sentence is perfect. If and when you're ready, start to stretch out the arms and legs, moving in whatever way feels good for you. And in your own time, in your own way, bringing yourself back up to sit in no rush no hurry when you get there just bring yourself into a seated position rub the palms together connect the right and left side of the body and bring your hands to your heart heart to your hands take a little bow to seal your practice namaste any questions, any comments, please let me know. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, yeah, any questions, any requests, let me know. Mwah.